반도체 탐구생활 구독자 여러분 안녕하세요 제가 오늘 복장이 굉장히 특이하죠 이게 광진복인데요 해외에서 굉장히 특별하고 귀한 분을 모셨기 때문에 딱 반도체 모드로 돌입을 해가지고 만나고자 합니다 자 오늘 만나 뵙는 분은 아이맥의 수장이십니다 룩 반덴홉 CEO십니다 어서오세요 Nice to meet you Yeah Nice to meet you Yeah I'm wearing this funny suit for this interview Oh, impressive <웃음> What is this? This is a wafer that we processed with sub oh, really? one uh, nanometer uh, features. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is IMAX leading edge technology wafer. Yes. <laughs> IMEC is a research center. We started about 40 years ago. We grew to become today the world's largest R&D center on chip technology. And so the key elements that have contributed to what IMEC is today, world's largest and most advanced independent R&D pilot line, where we do all the research on typically technologies that will be introduced five to 10 years from now. We also have a lot of visiting researchers from the many companies we work with, including a significant team also from Samsung, from SK Hynix, and from the other Korean companies with whom we work. We have many years of collaboration with Korea, more than 20 years. We have very strong partnership with uh, companies like Samsung and SK Hynix, and we're very committed to support the Korean semiconductor industry. And what recent collaborations has IMAC been working on with major Korean companies such as Samsung or SK Hynix? Basically, explore kind of the building blocks for the next generation technologies. Typically we work on technologies two, three, four nodes ahead of what is being done in manufacturing and we do that for both logic technologies and memory technologies, emerging memory technologies also, and for 3D heterogeneous integration, for photonics. So IMEC is working with both SK Hynix and Samsung on all of these topics actually. And you had a press conference yesterday. It was very interesting that you mentioned you will meet Lee Jae-yong and SK Hynix CEO Kwang Do Jung mm -hmm. in Korea. So did you meet or will you meet them? Well, typically when I visit Korea, I always uh, visit our close partners like uh, Samsung and SK Hynix. So you have a schedule in this week? This week I will meet with them, yes. What will be the topic? Well, we always uh, discuss about the progress of our collaboration and how we can help them become successful. Of course, we have many collaborations with Korean companies. The biggest ones that everybody knows uh, are companies like uh, Samsung and SK Hynix. But also in our automotive program, we're very happy that uh, LG is participating. Um, LG Electronics is very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Did LG Electronics join recently? Yes, they joined uh, our automotive chiplet program. LG Electronics is making electronics or vehicle, but they join in semiconductor R&D. That is very interesting. Yeah, so uh, we see more companies that are kind of focusing on system aspects, getting closer to the technology. But also the materials and equipment suppliers are very important. Companies like Dongjing, HPSP and uh, Park Systems, for example, are also companies with whom we work. Is there any Korean community at IMAC? Yeah, sure. We have more than 80 Koreans living and working at IMAC. These are people that are coming from some of our partner companies, resident researchers from Samsung, SK Hynix. But we also have several Koreans that joined IMAC as IMAC staff. Uh, but we also have a lot of uh, PhD students coming from Korea. Skill development, talent development is becoming such a very important priority yes, yes. for this industry. And so that's why establishing close links with Korean R&D ecosystem, the universities, is uh, very important. And in that uh, sense, I think Korean students studying at Korean universities, we can also set up exchange programs where they come for a certain time to IMEC, get experience in uh, leveraging the IMEC uh, infrastructure, and then come back to Korea to get uh, good jobs in Korean industry. Yes, well, I agree. And in our two years ago interview, you mentioned that considering Korea's semiconductor ecosystem, which is led by big, big companies like mm -hmm. Samsung or SK Hynix, establishing a Korean style iMac would not be easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you still hold this view? And what are the distinct advantages of iMac in comparison? And I believe that since doing R&D in this domain requires a lot of critical mass, IMEC has built up and has become one of the unique R&D providers in this industry. So just copying IMEC in another location would not create a benefit to the industry. But we are certainly very interested to explore opportunities on how we can collaborate. And if there are initiatives that are being set up in Korea, we would like to partner and do this jointly rather than create a duplication, which 
which I think the industry would not benefit from. With that in mind, is IMEC considering establishing new R&D center or office in Korea? We are always very open to any proposals. We believe that being close to some of our partners can have uh, strong advantages. Did you discuss with Korean government or companies? We have uh, sent messages to the government that we are open to, to discuss uh, proposals like this. We believe that it's also important to build out a stronger presence to also reach out to smaller companies in Korea and making our services available to those companies also can be very attractive. Mm -hmm. If I make established an R&D center in Korea, Korea will have very strong power in global supply chain, I think. Korea has a phenomenal strength in terms of technology development and manufacturing. I believe that the most effective way to stay leading in this domain is by connecting the strengths and that's what we are certainly willing to do. Okay. It was a very big issue in Korea that IMEC will hold ITF 2025. What motivated you to host ITF Korea? And looking at the list of speakers at ITF, including your keynote session, the topics seem to be largely categorized into silicon photonics you mentioned, and automotive and 3D packaging. I'm curious why you chose to introduce these areas and which field is IMEC particularly emphasizing? Well, Korea is a very important country for us. We have some of our biggest partners located here in, uh, in Korea. Besides those companies who know us already very well, we also want to expand and reach out to a bigger part of the Korean ecosystem. We realize that there is also a vibrant startup community here in uh, Korea to whom we want to create visibility. IMEC covers the broad spectrum of technologies that we are investigating, including logic and memory. But in view of the upcoming new applications, uh, some of the technologies you just mentioned, like 3D integration, like photonics, are becoming very important for the AI applications to realize high bandwidth connectivities between computer racks. Uh, so we wanted to create some more visibility on some of these new and emerging platforms. Of course, automotive uh, is also one of the topics we wanted to highlight because, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, Korea has a very strong automotive industry and, yes. we wanted, and, and we believe that chips and AI are going to be so important for the automotive industry and we wanted to establish some links and create more visibility to, on, on our activities in that field. I'm very interested in 3D packaging and a lot of Korean people are concentrated on 3D packaging because HBM is very important in Korea business and SK Hynix or Samsung are playing hard and they also focus on that business. No, I think that uh, the future is very much on a combination of further scaling in 2D. Uh, what lithography does for 2D scaling is what bonding does for 3D scaling and so you need a combination of both for future uh, compute systems we believe. Mm -hmm. Next question is about Moore's Law. Although Moore's Law is said to be reaching its limits but IMAC unveiled a CFAT fabricated using the A7 last December. And A7, or below the A7, this gives the, the impression that IMAX is demonstrating that we are still going and there are no limits. According to IMAX roadmap, how far do you believe scaling can continue? And beyond the Armstrong era, what comes next? I think that indeed uh, scaling roadmap is not going to stop very soon. We see a technical path for extending the roadmap for the next 20 years, I would say. Now, when you talk about more slow. It's all about integrating more transistors in a compute unit. And that trend is going to continue for a long time, as far as we can see, because there is an enormous demand for more effective compute power. And so there will be a lot of push to continue to innovate, to bring new technologies uh, on the roadmap. When we talk about CFAT, basically it's a combination of shrinking, but also stacking transistors or stacking chips. So the roadmap will be realized through a combination of all these effects. Effects. You refer to, to CFAT as the next uh, possible uh, transistor architecture. But beyond that, we will start using new materials in those CFATs, like 2D materials or nanotube uh, fats. Uh, and then, of course, there are other compute architectures that we may consider, like neuromorphic computing, quantum computing. So there are still many, many options to extend uh, the roadmap, we believe. You mentioned at the keynote speech that in 2039, there will be an era of below A2. Does it mean that? below A2 is available? 
Well, I think there's still a lot of research that needs to be done, but we believe that there are options available to extend the roadmap below A2. As I mentioned, one of the options could be to use these very thin atomically controlled layers as channels, so 2D materials as channels, but it could be used in a kind of a CFET architecture or nanosheet architecture. So we have to make sure that everything fits into an economically viable approach. But as long as there is a demand, I believe that there will be solutions. The next question is about EUV. In Korea, IMEG is well known for its work with EUV technology, you know? And also, I still vividly remember the presence of EUV scanner at Leuven IMEG Clean Room. Mm -hmm. It was very impressive. And I also read a press release about the opening of high NA lab in Veldhoven, maybe with ASML. Could you tell me whether installation of high NA EUV machines and R&D are also taking place in Leuven? And when do you expect high NA EUV to introduce into to mass production. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes, we are going to install high NA EUV also in our fab in Leuven. The reason why we set up first a joint lab with ASML in Veldhoven is because we want to introduce high NA EUV into manufacturing as quickly as possible. But there is a lot of development needed in order to make sure everything is ready for insertion into manufacturing. We're targeting for 2026. That is a very short time. The first machine became available only last year. If we would ask ASML to build up the machine first in their factory, then dismantle the machine and then rebuild the machine at IMEC, we would lose close to nine months to one year. Because there is such a short development time, we decided that rather than move the system from Veldhoven to Leuven, since we are so close, we better move part of our facility and infrastructure to ASML. And so we built a joint lab at ASML, which is a kind of an extension of our pilot line with a track and metrology tools and have a team of close to 30 people that operate the system over there. In this way, we gain about one year in the development of all the processes on the machine. And that's how we believe if we can ensure introduction into volume manufacturing next year, probably, in 26. Next question is about Nano IC pilot line. Many Korean semiconductor professionals admire IMAX extensive R&D infrastructure and also the plan to establish 2.5 billion euro Nano IC pilot line at IMAX headquarters to strengthen Europe's two nano semiconductor supply chain was particularly impressive. And could you provide more details about its launch timeline, the number of high NA tools that will be installed and the size of the R&D clean room? Well, you should look at this Nano IC pilot line project as an extension of the current facility. So it's not a separate pilot line. It will be an additional investment from the European Commission and, and some of our partners into the IMIC infrastructure that we have built up over the many years. We've invested for about 4 billion euro in the existing facility and we will add about 6,000 square meter of clean room, more than 100 of the most advanced tools, including including also several of the full suite of new ASML tools and the high NA machine that we talked about uh, just before is part of that tool set. And so we are going to install those tools in the next uh, three years and that will make sure that we can uh, increase the capacity of our infrastructure so we can process more wafers but it will also allow us to install all the newest capability that we need to have in order to develop the next generation processes for the next 5 to 10 years. As far as I know, there are currently no European chip companies mm -hmm. uh, capable of producing 2 nanometer mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. Is this pilot line intended to enhance Europe's materials or semiconductor ecosystem? Or is there a possibility that companies like Samsung or SK Hynix or TSMC or Intel could also participate in this project? And has this already been discussed with them? Well, this project should be viewed as a way to expand our infrastructure. And the goal is to make sure that IMEC can maintain its leadership position on R&D. And as IMEC is a global R&D organization, we work with all the key partners across the world, including Samsung, SK Hynix. And so when we expand our facility, of course, we want to continue to bring even more value to those partners so they are fully involved in what we will be doing in the, the following years and we'll get full access to this infrastructure. Okay, it'll be open to all of global sure. supply chain. Sure, that's the, the core, the Not basis of our model is open innovation with all these companies. Uh, we believe that it's very important uh, in order to stay at the forefront of research uh, to make sure that we enable global collaboration.
Thank you for your interview. You're very welcome. Thank you for your interest. Yes. Kansamida. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.